Martha Smirsky, member. Liz Bridget, member. Meredith Crandall, staff. Stephen Everett, member. Eric Gilbertson, member. Benjamin Cheney, member. Hannah Smith. <laughs> Unless anybody else has anything okay. to <coughs> add, uh, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. And second. I'll second. All in favor of the agenda, raise your hand. For anybody who's not been here before, we are advisory to the Development Review Board. We will listen to each of the applications and move them forward. And I understand our first applicant, 47 Court Street, Lake Point Investors. Applicant Bridget Morris is for a sign. And I understand she's on the phone. Yes, I'm sorry I was unable to make it tonight, but thank you for listening anyway. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Go ahead and describe your sign for us. We have pictures. Okay, great. So you have the application in front of you. It, it's pretty simple, really, just trying to fit it under the Edward Jones one um, for my new company. And uh, I hope that it's within the parameters of what you're expecting uh, for that part of town. Okay. Does anybody have any questions, comments about the sign? It is a metal sign attached to a wooden background. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. I see the the sign has a black border around it. If it's a wooden sign, does it have a does it have any kind of a cap around the edges to protect the, the wood? I I am not um, sure. I'm having it made uh, by the sign company on um, Main Street, and I believe they just print the black border would be on the metal, which is glued to the wood. Oh, okay. You may just want to ask them about something for the top of the sign, top and sides in particular, just to protect the wood, just for preservation. It doesn't have any... For weather, right as much to do with the design of the sign as it is just to protect your investment. Right, that makes sense. And, I will And how is the sign attached to the sign posts? The, I see the Edward Jones has some little struts that come out in the four corners. Yes, yes I've asked them to um, install it the same way that Edward Jones had theirs installed just to keep it uh, <laughs> no, that's fine. <coughs> I assume the intention is to have your sign be the exact same width as the Edward Jones sign? Uh, I don't believe so. I, my, my mother kind of designed it. Um, I think that she wanted it to be slightly different, actually. Uh, you know, I don't have this photo right in front of me, to be honest. If it's the same width, then yes. I know that it's either the uh, the height or the width that is different than the Edward Jones sign. Yeah, it, it, uh, shows, it shows the height different. The yeah, width, okay. The width, the then width. it must be the height, and the width should be the same, I think. Yes, that makes it compatible with the existing right. sign. Yeah. No, I think that it looks fine. Does anybody have any other comments, questions, suggestions. There is a criteria sheet. Uh, I'll read through it quickly regarding the sign. Number one, design review standards. In 1A, preservation and reconstruction of the appropriate historic style of the proposed projects in the historic district or involves an historic structure, acceptable. B, harmony of exterior design with other properties of the district, acceptable. C, compatibility of proposed exterior materials with other properties in the district, acceptable. D, compatibility of proposed landscaping, none proposed in this application. E, prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. F, location and appearance of all utilities, no lighting proposed for the sign. 
No. Okay, so not applicable here. Recognition of and respect for view quarters and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house, acceptable. Conformance with cityscape placement and design recommendations, acceptable. Compatibility with subject property and adjacent properties, acceptable. Shall not obscure significant architectural details, acceptable. Illumination, not applicable here. Pennants and banners, not applicable. Individual letters affixed, painted, or engraved directly on the building or structure are encouraged. This sign is acceptable in this location. All in favor of the application is proposed. Raise your hand. The application is approved. Great. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. So, Bridget, you'll need to come down to the planning office to be able to sign this recommendation form before we can issue the permit. Um, okay, I should be able to come by tomorrow. Perfect. We'll be open by 8 o'clock. Okay, thanks so much. Have a good night. Okay, right. thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you, Bridget. Bye. State Street, Capra Plaza, Samuel Sign, Samuel Sign Company. New signage. If that you come forward and have a seat. Thank you. And what's your name? Roger Samuel. Okay. Describe your application. Um, so, as you may or may not know, Northfield Savings Bank has um, rebranded re um, the bank several years ago, and we've been working with them on updating all the branches. Mount Pavilion being one of the uh, final ones. Uh, basically, they're looking to hire Otter Creek to uh, replace the blue banners that currently exist on the building with a gray banner. Uh, with logo, <coughs> logos in the same locations as they currently are, as well as the 24-hour ATM lettering that is currently on the, the blue banner. Uh, all the window decals will be removed from the front of the building and the side of the building. And on the awning, there is existing uh, blue lettering, raised lettering on each side of the entrance and exit of the awning. And those are being replaced with raised lettering as well in the new logo style and gray color. You're referring to this one? Correct. Will this one be printed onto a thing like this? the letters? It's, oh. Could you the mic otherwise? Yeah, sure. It's going to be attached directly to the facade of the existing awning, just like the old lettering. Just it's, like this? One. Yes. Okay. It's made out of canvas, right? The awning is made out of canvas. And, and the on either side. The lettering is going to be made out of uh, raised PVC lettering. Okay. But the panels on either side, that's also canvas. Uh, the weight here. Correct. Versus the stuff directly on the awning like that. Correct. Okay. So this is the drive up, though. This is right? the drive yeah. up. That's the drive up in the back. Is that an awning? Well, or the, not the awning, the, the drive up. The canopy. Roof. The canopy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The roof canopy. Over the drive up. Versus right. the yes. awnings. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> oh, there. Sorry. Wrong, Wrong terminology. Yeah. Wrong terminology. <laughs> Both okay, of us. Thank you. I had a question. I was looking at this. Why are the letters for bank? small. Yeah, I mean, there says Northfield on it, but there's no indication that it's a bank other than the letters underneath, which are pretty inconspicuous. Mm -hmm. Under, for the canvas awning? Or, it looks like any of yes, this one. Talking to the 
the, the letters are, are, are small and they're sort of gray and they sort of fade away. Yes, yeah, so that is the way their logo is designed and that's how they've been used throughout all of the projects. Yeah, that one I'm not sure we can, it's it's a branding logo yeah. thing, so I'm not sure we can really say much about that. I, I, um, I don't care, I just don't think it works very well yeah. with the sign. <laughs> yeah, well one of their intentions was to get rid of that eventually and just be called Northfield, Northfield. eventually. <laughs> Maybe the town would have something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some copyright issues. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's fine if they were okay with it, but just in terms of readability, if, and, and I know it's part of their logo, but if they could shade that up halfway to the white, at least you would see it for somebody who's not familiar with it as a bank. Sure. But again, that's that's their call. Yeah, yeah. I can certainly uh, bring that back to them. And just in terms of readability, contrast has as, as much to do with the readability as the size of the sign, uh, with the lettering. Totally agree. <laughs> as, as you well know, <laughs> since you're the expert. Just a quick question, just because it's... You know, I grew up in the area, but it's been so long since I i wasn't necessarily paying attention when this building was being built or revised. This is all granite here, right? That's going to be covered up by the awnings, or is it? No, it's kind of a painted stucco. Okay. Yeah, I wondered whether that was a significant architectural Yeah, because I know it's, it's that is the only, that echoes the top cornice, and that's the only break between the first and the second floor really in stylized changes. Yeah. I don't know. I looked at it and decided it was not. A, you decided it was not in looking at the whole building as a whole? That was my fault when I looked at it. But it's important to bring it up. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure that the committee discussed it. Does the awning over the ATM project a little bit more so you're actually protected? So you're covered from the weather, correct? And it's the same distance out as the the awning that's over the double entrance door from the parking lot side, which I believe are both yeah 36 inches. Uh, AT1's 36, and the entrance is 45 inches. That projects out. Does this panel here, the larger panel to the left of the side entrance, does that project out as well? Ten inches only. Oh, ten inches only. Yeah, as, as well as the front, the entire front awning is only 10 inches out from the building as well. And th that's indicated on this, this sketch here on ah. the side. Shows you the, the depth of each. Thank you. Mm -hmm. what, is the, what is the current projection? Are these the same projections or is the... So the current the awnings... The are set back. They're set back in between the brick pillars. Okay. And it's, we're proposing that the gray one is one continuous one along the entire front, and they go in front of the brick in order to create a more um, continuous, clean look, clean lines. To sort of separate that corner from the rest of Capitol Plaza? In this Correct. Okay. Yep. To help define that space. And I think it creates a less busy looking okay. situation. Charcoal gray, or it is it lighter is. than a charcoal? Yeah, it's, it's a light charcoal. Uh -huh. And the awning material is the typical umbrella fabric. Mm -hmm. and the awning that's remaining here, this is a Capitol Plaza awning that is a darker blue, close to the gray, but it's, yeah, it's more of a navy blue. Yeah. And that matches with the other Capitol Plaza awnings further down. Yeah.
there's pillars considered architectural details that are significant? Not to me. <laughs> I think it's, you guys have to decide if they are or not. Same with the other features. Probably not, but in, in terms of the, of the building here, it would be helpful. I mean, we, we can see what this is, but this would look more less conspicuous if we had the whole building. Mm -hmm. Because oh. it would be just in terms of the um, one of the criteria is it doesn't hide significant architectural details. And that is a detail, but I wouldn't call it historic exactly. I think yeah. or significant. But again, a, a picture of the of the entire building, I know this is better as far as the detail of the sign, but just one of the future reference, a picture of the entire building would make that look a little smaller in terms of the scale of the whole building. Sure, I understand. <coughs> in fact, the canvas becomes a sign band. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, it does. Is there a frame that's mounted like around on the face of the brick or it goes around the brick? Correct. The, the bypasses the brick and then the canvas is mounted directly on that? Correct. Okay. Yep. Is, the, is that framework attached to these panels or to the brick or how is that frame attached for the canvas? I cannot answer that because um, uh, Otter Creek Awnings is doing that work. And okay. I'm not sure what their plan is, where to attach that. I do know that the the top of the front awning is open, so that snow and rain and stuff can go through it. Mm -hmm. And the one on the side of the building that's solid gray is open, but then the one that's over the entrance and the ATM have a roof structure to help protect okay. people as they enter for our at the ATM. I guess our only suggestion would be that the mechanical attachment to the building be in the existing sign bands rather than into the brick itself just to preserve the material. Okay. And then the fastening should also go in the mortar. But if, if well, they are brick, if they are, but if they can manage to mount it in the existing brackets for the mounting of the frame if they could be they, mounted out then the sign band that would be the ideal okay I can bring that back to Otter Creek uh, I agree we, we typically try to put the all the fasteners within the mortar Just made a, a note 
that the ideal attachment for mounting the frame should be located in the existing bands between the brick pillars, but if the attachment is made in the brick pillars, the attachment should be made in the mortar joints between the bricks. Do you need lighting? There's no lighting proposed. Any other comments, questions, suggestions? Okay, I'll read down through the criteria and get to hear it again. <laughs> That's fine. Number 1A, preservation or reconstruction of the appropriate historic style of the proposed projects in the historic district or involves an historic structure, acceptable. Harmony of exterior design with other properties of the district, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed landscaping, none proposed. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, again, no change in lighting. Recognition of and respect for view quarters and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house, acceptable. Conformance with cityscape placement and design recommendations, acceptable. Compatibility with subject property and adjacent properties, acceptable. Shall not obscure significant architectural details, acceptable. Consistency and uniformity of multiple signs not applicable here. Illumination, no lighting proposed. Pennants and banners prohibited, not applicable. Individual letters affixed, painted, or engraved directly on the building or structure are encouraged. This sign is acceptable in this location. All in favor of the application as proposed, raise your hand. administrative permit out of the planning department so you should okay. that should get issued in a few days okay and do you guys do z cards yeah okay yeah that'll all get sent to you in the mail or if you want we can call you and you can come pick it up yeah if you want to call then i'll have call the, or email. I'll have the okay. branch come pick it up and they can post it okay Save this trip down Essex. <laughs> good thank you thank you for coming yep thank you good luck with your project thank you Hold on, we're okay. going to go through a couple minutes first. Uh, we can't do the October 21st ones. We don't have a quorum, so just October 7th yes. minutes. Eric Hanna Ben. Eric Hanna Ben. I haven't had a chance to look at the October 7th. Yeah. Any questions, changes? Do I hear a motion to approve? Second. All in favor of the October 7th minutes, which are now. Minutes are approved. And the 21st, we'll give those back to you. Yes, please. Uh, I'll, I go through all okay. of the stack and when nothing's out. Okay, and we're down to other business. Now come up and <laughs> see us. Introduce yourself for anybody who have, who doesn't know you, although I'm not sure if there is anybody who doesn't oh, know you. I don't, I don't know everybody here. I'm, I'm Rob Hitzig. I'm with the Public Arts Commission, Montpelier Public Arts, Arts Commission. And we're proposing, eventually, um, putting light on the vines that are in the alley between um, the Blanchard Block and yes. uh, the Zutano. Made those yeah, it, it's in here. It's in here. It was originally done by Jeffrey um, Darling. Jeffrey it? Darling, yes. Yeah. 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 You weren't around then, or were you? Uh, not as a member of this committee. <laughs> so this isn't an official application, but we'll hoping to make an application next 
meeting and um, just getting some feedback from you now so we can make any changes to our application. But um, essentially what we want to do is uh, put some nice uh, LED lights on it. There would be white lights, uh, about 200 feet of it. I forget exactly how they're spaced, but about five inches apart. And then also about 12 sets of um, these, what they call supernova lights, which, which chain, they, they sort of go through in a wave pattern, a blue wave pattern of, of LED lights coming down at um, 12 different locations along the, the sculpture. And it'd be on a timer. Does the, does the light change? As you're walking through, does that light change? Uh, at this point, no. no. They're not motion sensitive. But um, we've thought about doing something like that, and that's one of the things that we want to look into in the future, and perhaps working with the high school and students there to come up with additional ideas to for lighting the it would space. Would be cool if it were interactive. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Um, we we just wanted we just wanted to get it up right now and do something really simple, and then as time goes on, make additional changes and, and perhaps they work at the high school to do something like that. Um, yeah, we've got an O'Hare airport in Chicago. That's what I was saying. Oh, yeah. Right. Uh -huh. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that. It's overkill. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot of light. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you're just fasten those. We'll just wrap the, it around. Just yeah. Kind of. mm -hmm. And where, where are the uh, lights, the other lights going to changing you're just gonna wrap yeah I think that, that, yeah they'll be in within the sculpture I don't think they could hang down because it's it'll probably be, be hanging too far down if they hang so we'll wrap them in within the, the sculpture is the wire of the lights like black so you don't really see it uh, uh, like I forget whether the black or green I think they're black but, um, <coughs> oh, is the mine yeah. green I forget is it green it's black now it's isn't it rust. yeah it's yeah. rust rust oh, yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Are they going to be on a timer or? Right. We're going to set it for 10 p.m. I mean, 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. initially. It's 5, 5 p.m. is too late, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. It is. We, and it, maybe we'll set it a little earlier. I, I think that alley probably gets dark. It's the first place to get dark in Montpelier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you put them on a timer, they actually have timers now. I have one at the house. That adjusts to oh really dusk uh -huh. whenever that happens to be so like light so sensitive it, it, so they no oh, okay it just adjusts according to when it gets dark at four o'clock now <laughs> <laughs> yeah and automatically adjusts through the season yeah we could we could set it for four you could do it yeah. you could do a light sensitive and but then you'd have to have a uh, a timer to tell Turn it to it go off. off. And they, they have both of those, so that's an option as well. So you, you don't have to keep monkeying with the timer to adjust it to come on earlier because it gets closer to December 21st. <laughs> on a yeah. cloudy day, it gets dark in there. <sighs> yeah, really early. Oh, we can always so the, have it have your application be for like from dusk to 10 p.m. and uh -huh. then okay. that way, whatever dusk idea. is, you can adjust uh -huh. as needed. Just want to so do that. Sorry. The, the wire itself, the cable itself, would be black, and then the the lights. Does it have a socket, or the individual lights, or is it just a, a cable light? Um, they're cable. They're on a. They're all on the cable. They're so, like it's like Christmas lights, basically. A string. Okay. And a string. They hang, they hang down from the. Uh, the they'll, vine. they'll be wrapped around the vine. Oh, okay. Where do they plug into? There's an outlet above uh, Zutana on the, the second floor there, just outside the window. I had a picture of it. I don't know if I... Yeah, yeah. there it is. Yeah. It's, it's on the roof above the Zutana. Okay. Ah, oh, that's... I was trying to oh, figure shows, out what it was. It shows right there. Yeah, I, just, I couldn't yeah. figure out that it was the roof or what it was. But yeah. now I am. Thank you. Black color would be the... I think the preferential color just because of the color of the ironwork. Right. Any, anything lighter than that would detract from the appearance of the ironwork. 
November 12th uh, planning commission meeting HPC is going to be attending if at all possible yeah. to do a final discussion on the new design review regulations as well as um, this meeting hopefully get to the design overlay map changes because we didn't get to those last meeting I think I sent everybody around an update on that yeah. um, last week so that'll be this coming, not tomorrow, this coming Tuesday, next Tuesday. So if anybody wants to attend, they should feel free. They are welcome. Well, that would be good. There, We had the public meeting. The Planning Commission had the public meeting. Yeah. Pu public right. input session with just HPC and DRC yeah, and members. Nobody there for the public. <laughs> oh, that's okay. We'll probably hear from them all when it's actually up for adoption. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> They say they're affected. Yes. If yeah. anybody who's out there wants to attend, well, please the do. The boundary issue really has been out there. Yeah. Yet. And they did make some changes. In the, I don't know whether it was actually a proposed boundary because we didn't really. Yep. We proposed didn't. proposed boundary changes. So those, those should be discussed next week. <laughs> um, and those are all up on the city website. If anybody wants to take a look at them. Okay. Or they can contact me, and I'll send them the map. <coughs> Excuse me. I should be so glad when that gets done. Yeah, I'm sure. By the way, just as a ni nice aside, the Northfield Savings Bank, the maximum size of their letters is 12 inches. <laughs> Even though they're viewed from a long distance away. Having coffee and looking at that message. Just, just thought I'd bring that up just for future. I, I, I checked the dimension of the letter, but I figured there's a problem you take care of. <laughs> As a side note, I do know that the letters are being printed out at 24 inches on paper as of today or tomorrow, and to go up to just double check. Oh. They're comfortable with the 24 inches. That's nice. So um. I said there's some thought put into that yeah, so they are so what are they now uh they got approved for 24 inch height at rabble rouser right okay um, by gonna, the development review board i couldn't remember I the we, size right, yeah cut them a half long ways and put a space in between so it's two rows <sighs> they are being 
they're just proof of concept by putting them out on a piece of paper and stepping back and taking a look at the piece of paper up there first. So we may see them again. By the way, we'll print out some of the uh, information Additional that we might have pulled up before. Uh, there's actually a science to the size of the size of lettering from distance viewed. And a 24-inch sign, the maximum viewing distance for 24-inch letters is 1,000 <coughs> feet, which is three quarters of the way up to Vermont College. I'm kidding. It's be hard to get that far away from me. And the longest distance that sign will be viewed from is the steps of City Hall, mm -hmm. which is 180 feet away at maximum. Well, I mean, at an angle down the street, probably, right? Yeah, but mm. there, there, there is, there <laughs> is that. Yes, there is I that. Mean, I'm not and, and they're, they're not big enough for anything, but yeah, yeah. No, so and anyway, the directly they're, across. They yeah. I did some research because some of the signs, like Cool Jewels, people have actually complained that they're too large. Yeah. And from walking on the sidewalk, you actually have to turn your head to scan to see it, even on the other side of the street. So there's a, a science to the size of the sign, and what you want to see is the, the name in a blink rather than have to read oh, it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And that, that has to do with what they're suggesting is one inch size for every 10 feet of distance. So 100 feet would be a 10 inch letter. Right. Mm -hmm. And some some districts, uh, Boston, New York, Philadelphia, Savannah, Charleston, uh, they have a maximum letter size for like a downtown street that's front. Good. That's not a bad idea. Retail yeah. maximum size is 18 inch. Mm. Even in the older sections of New York, I right. think we had to adopt those guide guidelines. Well, the, I mean, there's the planning director Mike Miller and I have discussed that we need to basically revamp the entire sign provision in the regulations and the zoning regulations we're taking things in sections right now um so yeah. they they had their big rewrite that was adopted september 25th that hit a lot of high priority issues we're taking the design review chunk and then we've also got signs coming up but i'm not quite sure what the timing is on that because planning commission is also working on the master plan so that's got to sort of take priority. People keep thinking that bigger is better, but at the same time, yeah. contrast uh, font has as much to do with readability as the size. Yep, right. If you were to walk out the front door of the Shaw supermarket and look across the entire parking lot, the sidewalk, the street, the sidewalk, and the entire parking lot in front of Sarducci's, you can clearly read that sign, and it's, I don't even know if it's 12 inches high. Hmm. And that's a couple hundred feet. What about flashing in the end? <laughs> <laughs> Another hole. <laughs> no longer allowed. But anyway, you know, it, it'd be nice that, if people, it'd be nice if we had right something now. to hand out to people who yeah. are coming in to apply sure. for science sure. so that they understand that there's actually a science behind it that makes readability not necessarily related to size of the letter. Yep. Especially in a smaller, you know, street. Main Street from side to side, straight and sidewalks. It's only 80 feet across to the opposite side of the sidewalk. People are funny. Was, I think it's really funny that you can hardly read the bank on Northfield. You know, well, that's yeah. part of their logo. It might show up brighter on the awning than it does right. their that's significant. I, I, I imagine representation. That, uh, 90 plus percent of the people would go to the Northfield Bank know exactly where they're going. And don't look at the sign. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what did the final um, sign for Rabble Rouser actually say? At the last meeting that I was at that they presented, it was like they were still thinking about what they actually were going to put yep. up there. No, it was going to be the florist. Florist espresso chocolate. It was going to be everything. Florist espresso sign, chocolate not the uh, rabble rouser spirits. Sign. Okay. Yeah. Florist espresso chocolate spirits. That, and then the, the rabble rouser is in the window and then on the alley side of the building. Right. But by the way, an interesting uh, comment, you probably know what I'm going to say. Probably. Is that when you put a sign on your glass and you do it inside, it doesn't have to go through any permit. Mm -hmm. But 
their lettering is stuck on the outside of the glass. Is it? Yes. Oh, I didn't notice that. I noticed that they added Jamaican food to the side of the building without getting permission. <laughs> so that changed their size. That's pretty good. They used There's to have a card. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that they're in there now. Yeah. So anyway, um, the letters are applied on the outside. Oh, I didn't know that. <coughs> Between spirits and chocolate. Food. Yeah, I went, I went by and I'm looking and I can see the reflection of the glass, except it doesn't reflect where the lettering was. Oh, no. Okay. And so I went just to my finger and, yeah, it's a pipe on the outside. Is it painted on, Steve? What's that? Is it painted on or is it? Uh, it's letters sure that it's look like they're stuck on. Okay. Yeah, they're just not supposed to do that. <laughs> I didn't notice that part. Sorry. <laughs> well, <laughs> bring that up. <laughs> You can spend your whole day in there, but chocolate, <laughs> spirits, <laughs> Jamaican food. <laughs> I think the letters on the window are hard to read. To make a, uh, but, uh, you know, a real uh, caffeine yeah. overdose. I don't know oh, what yeah. it is, but they don't really but, stand. But then you got the spirits to calm it down. <laughs> it's, <laughs> that's that's their choice, but yeah. it's great also stuff. on the outside it's going to get scraped yeah. by all sorts job. of really snow and ice and stuff. Oh, the window cleaner and all that. Well, I guess it would get scraped on the inside, too. Well, yeah, but the outside's probably going to get dirty. So anyway, mm, yeah, yeah, we yeah. never voted to adjourn. Do I oh. hear a motion to adjourn? Yes. Second. Second. All in favor of adjournment, raise your hand. Meeting is adjourned.